Warning, this product contains extreme nostalgia. Has your job got you down? Is adulting not as fun as you thought it would be? Do you want a way to recapture that happiness from when you were a kid? At Retrostalgia Box, you feel like a kid again. Comics, toys, and video games hand curated from the past and straight to your door. Unbox happiness at RetrostalgiaBox.com. Once again, that's RetrostalgiaBox.com. Yeah! Have you ever engaged in a serious debate over which is better, Harry Potter or Lord of the Rings? Have you ever played Smash or Pass using only characters from Star Wars and Marvel movies? If you answered yes to any of these questions, we have the podcast for you. Listen to the Steam Gentleman, the podcast where an expert panel convenes to ask the questions about pop culture and social commentary that other podcasts are afraid to ask. Listen to the Steam Gentleman on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Welcome back, everybody, to the Real World Chronicles. I am your host, Brad Drake, and this is All Elite Wrestling. Today, we are going to go over our save, the AEW itself, and make some changes. I have made some errors here, and I am going to fix them. And the first error I'm going to address is... Two nights ago in the game, we held our first edition of All Elite Women's Wrestling. It only got a 51. We busted out our heavyweights here, everybody, our top-tier women wrestlers, and we only got a 51 rating. We took a hit. We lost popularity. We can't do that. We can't have that happen. So we have to make a change, and right now, we're going to make that change. This is no longer going to be a women's specific show. This is a Saturday morning show, or early afternoon, as the game puts it, on TBS, and we are going to make the change, everybody. One thing I forgot to tell you about is I cut our rosters up into brands to make it easy for the different episodes. So there's actually an AEWW brand there that's all women wrestlers. Um, Now that I'm getting rid of AEWW, I think we're just going to go ahead and drop all these brand splits because I don't think they're going to do any good for us. So we are changing this show to AEW Championship Wrestling. All right, old school name, generic name for a TV show. It's going to be perfect. So here we go, old school, simple, plain logo, AEW Championship Wrestling. Okay, it is no longer going to be a women's only show. We're not even going to give it another chance. We're pulling the plug on it and making this change and making it happen. All right, now let's adjust our announcers also for Championship Wrestling. This is a lot of television, everybody. I get it, but... Hey, this is this is pro wrestling, you know. All right, let's take a look. Who do we want on there? Do we want Jimmy Smith and Taz? Jimmy Smith and Taz would be a pretty good lineup. Do we want Jimmy Smith and Tony Schiavone? Do we want Tony Schiavone and Taz? Do we want Jimmy Smith on there? Is Jim Ross still able to do announcing? He is 68. I'm going to be honest. I think that... Uh, Jim Ross's best days are behind him, and I think he's pretty awful nowadays. All right, how about we change this up and have some fun with this, and we have Tony Schiavone and Alex Abrahantes. I like that. That's what it's going to be for championship wrestling. Okay, the change has been made. Let's verify it now. There we go. Okay. 
Boy, I hate to do it because I had high hopes to run an all women's show, but it's not just it's just not going to work out. So we're going to continue to rely on women of honor to get our women over and we'll continue using women in dark matches and then on the shows. Um hey, everybody, we did the best we could. It just didn't work out for us. Okay, the other thing that I want to go over here is quarterly events. Okay, so we just had, or we're going to have, Battle the Belts here in January. So our next quarterly event would be April. They have AEW St. Patrick's Day Slam as the next one. Okay, so let me pull out my phone here. What day is St. Patrick's Day this year? I don't know offhand. I'm going to look it up here while I'm talking to you. Okay, it is March 17th. So that's technically, in the game world, the third week. So we are going to have this show on the actual... We are going to have it on the actual St. Patrick's Day, which is Friday night. We can't have it Friday night because that's Rampage. So we are going to have it on Saturday night, the third week of March. Okay? And it's not going to be dormant. It's not going to be lesser. I don't know why they got these listed as lesser. It hurts it. So there's St. Patrick's Day Slam. It's in there. All right. The other special that we're going to have. It's going to be Beach Break. Beach Break is scheduled for, they got it scheduled for the fourth week of January. Um, I would think more of a, that'd be more of a spring break type thing, right? All right, I have to do a little bit more research on this stuff and we'll deal with it then. And yeah, so we'll take care of it that way. All right, a uh, little other thing I wanted to show you here is we have made some contract offers. I think Carl Fredericks is a good fit for us. When he signs, we are going to send him to Global Force. He's going to get some work there in India. What I plan on doing, everybody, with these developmental territories is I plan on shifting these wrestlers around. So they'll do like three to six months in India, then they'll come and do three to six months with uh, Ring of Honor, that kind of stuff. We'll change them around, all right? Here is Shun Skywalker. I dig this guy. I like this guy, and I think he is going to be Tiger Mask 5 for us, and I will most likely send him to India first also. Flamita, who's been around for a while, I think this guy's a decent hand. He's young. And I think he's going to be a good fit for Ring of Honor. Halcon Siriano Jr., very young. This is another guy I think would be a good hand for Ring of Honor. And then we have L.A. Park Jr., who is a big dude, good-sized guy, um, very young. We could either send him to India or over to Ring of Honor, but I think he would work out well for us. So that's our contract negotiations. And then keep in mind, everybody, we let very few people go, like we had in the original save. And, uh, I mean, we, we let go of people like uh, uh, Jake Roberts and, and that kind of stuff. And, and we went through all those people again and got rid of them. But we held on to the Indian Giant, Satnam Singh, Singh, whichever way it's pronounced, we put them over in Global Force. Global Force actually had its first set of tapings. Things went okay, except for the fact that Brian Pillman Jr. got injured pretty badly. So Griff Garrison's also out, so we can make that adjustment right now. And uh, that hurts, but again, that's just the way this game goes. You really don't have any control over that. Ring of Honor, of course, is still doing their thing. I just got rid of all those silly extra titles that they had. Women of Honor is doing their thing. They're doing just fine. Um, I think their shows have been getting in the 50s, but we can check, I think. So we go over here to Child Companies. Here is Women of Honor. 
And uh, no, we cannot see their previous shows. Fair enough. What are you going to do? There's company info. <laughs> All right. Uh, what else should we go over while I have you here? As I said, as far as, oh, we got, uh, we were able to get Global Force Wrestling into the Alliance. So I just had to log in as New Japan and change the number of promotions allowed in the Alliance. Then I was able to get them in. It only makes sense, right? They're our child company. Why wouldn't they be in? It only makes sense that way. All right. uh, What else do we have going on? We go back to these events. You can see that we are running the Wrestling Revolution Tour. And again, I'm just really sad about all elite women's wrestling. I thought it would work out. And unfortunately, it's just not going to work out for us. But what are you going to do? That's the way it goes, right? Um, while we're here, let me take a look at this beach break. See if we can't get this figured out. So stick with me here, everybody. Apparently it was a two-part event last year. And it was held in January. Well, we're not going to have Beach Break and Battle of the Belts in January, okay? We already have St. Patrick's Day Slam for March. I guess we make Beach Break in February. I don't want it to be a lesser. I want it to be active. So why don't we have this special in February? Man, this is a lot of shows. This is a lot of shows. And let's have it in the third week of February. Okay. So now Beach Break is active. All right. So we'll go ahead and leave it at that for now. And is there anything else we need to take a look at here? Yeah, let's take a look at this brand split now. Yeah, this is disappointing too because I put a lot of time into this brand split. But no, you know what? I'm going to leave the brand split. I'm going to leave the brand split because then I can easily look up who's wrestling for what promotion in game. So that, I'm going to go ahead and leave it. So, all right. Now, our upcoming for AEW. Obviously, here in the game, we have Battle of the Belts tonight because I ran it on the real time, the real date that it was. I haven't decided yet what the card is going to be. Uh, I'm also not planning on recording it because you already had a version of Battle of the Belts recorded. I don't want to confuse anybody, but we will continue. on with our save and record sporadically. Like I said, I'm also playing this for pleasure. So it's not going to be a sequential save. You're going to see things as they come. One thing I can tell you is I did make the decision to keep the All Atlantic title. I just renamed it the AEW International Heavyweight. And I can tell you this much this clown, Orge Cassidy, He's not going to hold it for too much longer. So (laughs) we're going to put it that way and make it simple. So uh, the live events started. I already laid out live events. I'm calling, instead of doing just endless live event tours, what we're going to do and what I'm doing is naming them for the tour, right? Because we are building up to revolution. And I'm going to rename it right now to Wrestling Revolution. And I think we've gone over this before, but 
How many things in pro wrestling need to be called revolution? Right? There's so many revolutions. Like, go look, go, go do a Google search for wrestling under pro wrestling with revolution. There's a million different promotions named revolution. There's a million different shows named revolution. So why not change it up and call it wrestling Re- revolution? I like wrestling revolution. I think it works. So we're going to call it wrestling revolution. So you can see we already have tour dates established here for January. We've already run at least one. And it went pretty well for us. We got a decent little turnout. And there it is. Show history right there. So yeah, that was our first tour. We ran it in the Southwest. We used the Galen Center out of Los Angeles. I believe that was Los Angeles. Yes, it was Los Angeles. And of course, we have our next one coming up here. I haven't decided yet where we're going to have it. I'm trying to take these tour dates and the television recordings for all the dark shows and bring them around the country so we get mass exposure for our wrestlers, also into Canada. So I think it's a smart way to do it, and I think it'll benefit our wrestlers across the board. So that's what we have going on. But, of course, we got Battle of the Belts that I have to film tonight. And then, of course, we have our regular television, and then we have our regular shows. We got a lot of booking, everybody, but a promotion with the roster the size of AEW's should probably run things just like this. This is how you run a professional wrestling company, a touring company. And I've gotten some really cool comments on YouTube and online that people are digging that I'm running this like an 80s promotion, like an old school promotion. And I really appreciate it. And I'm trying to run this as new style as I can, but just that it makes sense and makes money. And there was a formula that worked for years for pro wrestling that people aren't really following anymore, and pro wrestling is losing millions and millions of viewers every year. So why not run this like an old school company as much as I can? You know, obviously, television, the B shows can be all squash matches, which I dig, but our two main shows and now three main shows can't be. They can't be all squash matches. That's not going to get us the gain we need. Or the viewers. So we got to be realistic. Even though back in the 80s, that's the way World Championship Wrestling was. Um, So yes, I do enjoy the merge. I think things are working here. Again, this is a huge save with a lot of work. But I'm digging it, everybody. And I'm having a blast. And I'm looking forward to see what else we can make happen here. And I appreciate all of you along for the ride and enjoying this with me. because. It has been an absolute blast. Yes, we are going to get this World Junior Heavyweight title figured out soon. And yes, we had FTR win the tag team title. And Samoa Joe is still our World Television title. And this stuff, everybody, I think is going to go away. But I have not decided yet. So, All right, thanks for tuning in, everybody. For any of you that are interested in the 1987 Super Mod. You can check out our social media for the Super Mod. Facebook.com slash group slash 1987 Super Mod. You can also find us over on Reddit under the subreddit of TEW 2020 Friends. Don't forget we're also on Discord under 1987 Super Mod. Everybody, you can find these episodes early and ad-free along with the 1987 Super Mod and also All of our spreadsheets available only on Patreon, patreon.com slash Powercast Network. Check it out, everybody. It starts at only $5 per month, and you get access to everything, including those bonus episodes. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow.